this is episode three of strength for the battle and today we are going to be getting into the breastplate breastplate of righteousness and i'm gonna be really really honest with you i it took a lot for me to actually get on here today um since i started this series i have been attacked a lot more um by the enemy and um i know that god is with me and i believe everything that i come on here and say but this isn't an easy walk okay um spiritually and mentally um i know that the word of god is true but the flesh <laughs> oh, the things that I want to do I really just need to stay in prayer so which I don't mind doing but um, I can't control everything and everyone around me I can only control myself and it has been a challenge so in prayer because I'm not going to stop um if the devil couldn't stop me from spitting and speaking lies who knows in the world I am not going to stop speaking truth know that I am not so let's get into it breastplate of righteousness when soldiers go into battle they they wear protection over their chest to protect their vital organ, organs. If an arrow, bullet, or a, any kind of sharp object is to pierce the chest cavity, then the consequences will be dire, and de death is almost a certainty. When Paul wrote about the armor of God, equating different parts of the armor to different parts of the gospel message, he did not do this without me. Uh, the, the breastplate of righteousness is a good example of his thinking. In Christ, we have been given the free gift of righteousness by faith. As long as we believe it. Okay, we have to believe it. If we don't believe it, then what are you really doing? You're just showing up with there being no possibility of action because the way to activate our faith is by action. When we believe that we are righteous by faith, then the power of sin cannot touch us. Through the power of Jesus' death, which we take on in baptism, our sins have been removed and we have been set free from the law. We are reckoned righteous by faith, just as Abraham was reckoned righteous when he believed the words of God. But we have to hold fast to that belief. We have to remember at all times that we are set free from sin and reckoned righteous. Holding that thought is holding that thought in all situations. Through every season, through everything that comes our way, we need to hold on to the thought of it. The weapon that the devil will throw at us to destroy our faith is doubt. He will start planting doubt. And when we doubt that we have been set free from the sin and have been, have been released from the law, then the devil will use that doubt to make us believe we are still sinners. Or he will try to make us feel guilty. Or he will push us into self-condemnation or he will try to convince us that we are still sinners under the law contrary to what the scripture says and the power of the blood of Jesus as it is written in Romans chapter 4 verse 25 Jesus was put to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification his death took away our sins and his 
resurrection, life justifies us, making us righteous by faith. Faith is how we put on the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. We believe we have died with Jesus and we have been reckoned righteous by God through faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So test yourself. Do you believe or call yourself a sinner still? Do you believe you are still under the law? Do you think that doing the work of the law will give any kind of salvation? If so, then you are not yet wearing the breastplate of righteousness. If you have been baptized into death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Recognize that you have already received the free gift of righteousness. Cast off the shackles of sin and law and believe in the power of God to make you righteous through the sacrifice and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have all seen many who have fallen. Jesus warned that the love of many would grow cold. Do not presume it cannot happen to you. Our enemy has been deceiving mankind for thousands of years. Our experience, on the other hand, spans for but a brief moment. It is wisdom to recognize that we do not know all there is to know concerning this warfare. Therefore, let's be bold, but never brash or arrogant in your prayer life. Use your spiritual authority administratively, um, compassionately, but never, never presumptuously. Multitudes of well-meaning but ignorant Christians have approached the field of spiritual battle with flippant attitudes and I urge you my friends to study and seek confirmation from the Lord for your strategies. Let's, let's close in prayer. Gracious and loving God, yourself in scriptures. Daily illuminate my mind with your wisdom. Strengthen me that I may stand on the day of battle confident in the one who defeated all evil. Hallelujah. In your name I pray. Amen. Um, that is it for this episode. I'm going to post the verses that I read and I will be praying that you guys all dive into and see how the Lord speaks to you. Um, until tomorrow, God bless you. I love you. God loves you so much. So, so much. I'll see you tomorrow.